In today's video, let's cover some exercises from the No Springs Reformer Workbook. We're going to skip to page three, section three, facing in, and we're going to cover three exercises today. We're going to do the standing saw, standing thread the needle, and lateral walking planks. Now, I'm going to talk about the, the um, let's start talking about the standing saw first. The standing saw, and there's some variations, and I'll show you with the box. So this is, if you have the book open to page 68, you can see the uh, variation at the bottom. And that's what we're going to do first. The most important thing is pelvic stability for this, because it's technically a trunk rotation, a torso rotation. So the reason why I like to use this is it helps stabilize when we're first learning how to do this standing saw variation. So I'm going to show you facing uh, the camera, and then I'll walk around and show you facing back too. So basically, you want to get your feet fairly wide and flex at the hips. Now, I really want to do a flat back. I want to stay away from any rounding, especially as we go into thoracic or torso rotation or trunk, whatever you call it. So by having one hand on, it's going to give you a little bit more stability versus doing the variation with the arm off, which is the first one. But I wanted to go over this first. So let's go ahead and cover that. One hand is on the spring side edge is my preference. And I'm just going to test it and see. And I'm going to go more this way. I don't know why I thought I wanted to start all the way up there. Hand position is up to you. I've done it where I've started the hand in this position, and that way I can kind of push. I can also just have it here for stability. So let me show you both hand positions, and I'm gonna consider this as a stabler, more stable variation. So really lengthen through the spine, take a big inhale, exhale, and saw. Now the difference between saw and just like a regular rotation is I'm adding deeper hip flexion and lumbar flexion. So I'm going towards the ground as opposed to staying lifted, which can be done too, but this specific saw variation is going towards the uh, ground. So you're lowering yourself. So I'll do two more. Exhale as I begin to rotate, flex hips and lower back pushing the carriage out and back up. One more with this hand position, start working from the shoulder, that pulls me into rotation, and then I flex hips and lower back. Changing the hand position to palm face away. Be careful the box does rock, but just know this is here for stability purposes only. And I'll show you two here. Start with the arm, rotation, and have that pull you into saw. One more time. Inhale to prepare, exhale, rotate, lowering down, flexing hips, flexing spine, and rotating. Now I'm slightly pushing into this right hand on the box, and that also is gonna help facilitate a little bit more rotation. Let me show you facing the camera, or facing away from the camera. So two exercises one or two different variations here is having the uh, hand hands close one thing i really want to watch out for even though we are going towards this leg i really want to watch for pelvic shifting so even when we're sitting on the ground we're not moving our hips too much so let me show you one more time. Start with arm, have that pull me into rotation, add lumbar and hip flexion, and then I'm kind of taking my body and aligning it with my left leg, and then back up. Starting neutral, I'll show you the hand in this position. Starting with my torso in neutral position, meaning my head and shoulders are aligned with my hips. Initiate with the right arm, have that start in pulling me into torso rotation, having my body go into lumbar 
and hip flexion. Now see how I'm still in neutral? I want to take myself toward my left foot. And if I want to get a deeper stretch, watch my left arm push and twist. One more time. And back. So that's the modification using the up-ended box for that saw variation. Here is, uh, so the one in the book shows arm up. You can do both arm up and arm down. So here is the variation shown in the book. Starting here, actually, sorry, a little bit backwards there, going from side to side. Starting here, I'm gonna start with my arm out. So think about saw. We're starting with our arms open, we rotate, and we reach. So theoretically, our arms are open, here's our saw. So if I wanna start a little bit farther, initiate with the arm, have that pull us into rotation, and then finishing lumbar and hip flexion back up. I'll show you one more. Arm, what makes our right arm look to the ceiling isn't typically raising the arm. It's actually torso rotation. We're stabilizing in that arm. And then going to the leg and back. Let me show you facing away from the camera. And that's as simple as a standing saw is. It's a very simple exercise. Neutral spine, arm, rotate, laterally flex, and back up. Last one, arm, rotate, laterally flex, and back up. All right, so there's the basic um, rotation variations of standing saw. You can do kneeling saw too. And I'm not sure if that's place a raised arm for stable, yeah. For a stable variation, I'll just show you facing away so you can see the setup. It's the same thing kneeling. So a lot of the times our hamstrings are so tight, we don't typically move properly. So if I do a kneeling on the box variation, I can actually take my arms up. I'm gonna take myself slightly away and I'm gonna take the arm down, flex in the hips, arm, and go to, I'm gonna go a little wider. So full choreography, arm down, you can move the foot bar as well. Flex at the hips until the hand comes to the spring side edge. Initiate with arm and rotate. I'm gonna put hand on top and then back up. So there's an option to take your hamstrings out of the equation by doing a kneeling on the box. Be sure to pad the knee if needed for sensitivity. Now let's cover the second exercise in this series. It's standing thread the needle. Now the difference between standing thread the needle and saw. In saw, we are not only thoracic rotating, we're adding hip and lower back lumbar flexion, as well as a little bit of side bending towards the uh, leg. So there's a lot of things there. There's rotation, there's hip and lumbar flexion, and there's a little bit of lateral flexion too. When we're doing standing thread the needle, it's strict rotation. There's no nothing else. If you wanna add lumbar, um, and hip flexion you can, and I'll show you both variations. The one in the book is staying strict thread the needle. Uh, so it's strict. If you look at picture one and picture two, my torso is at pelvic level. So I'll show you that. Also hand position is a little bit different. I wanna start with the carriage closed and my pubic bone aligned with the shoulder rest. Feet are wide and turned out, flex at the hips. So you're gonna notice where my torso is, it starts here. I can actually lower myself if I want to, so I'm really not moving other than rotation. Or I can start up and work myself down. In the book, I think it's just showing neutral, so arms are here, 
Left hand is closest to you because that's gonna be the pull we want. You can try both, this is my preference. So start with, and again, we're not moving with the arms. Be very careful, I see that a lot. So think about that. If you've ever held the magic circle, imagine the magic circle on your breastbone and the carriage and try not to move it offline. So what rotates you is torso. So let me show you a couple reps, starting down, strict torso rotation. Noticing there's no lateral flexion. And let me show you if you wanna add a little bit deeper stretch, rotation and hip and lumbar flexion and back up. So here's the standard shown in the book is where we stop here, adding additional hip and lumbar flexion, looks like that, and back up. That's all there is to that, really be careful. A lot of the times you're gonna see some pelvic shifting and I'll show you what it is we want to stay away from when we're doing thread the needle. We want it pretty, pretty balanced and controlled. So watch the pelvis and here is what I want to have happen. Very minimum, if not any movement at all in the pelvis. I'm always cueing in this direction. The arm, the lat that's closest to the spring side edge of the carriage, which in this case is my right, what makes me rotate is my right lat reaching to the back of that reformer. And here's what it looks like adding a little bit of flexion of the lumbar and hips. So that's the standing saw variation or standing thread the needle. Same rule applies with the kneeling variation as far as taking the hamstrings out of the equation if you want. Get nice setup and rotate. Now you can add a pillow and you can see in the, um, in the book there's a pillow there. Some people tend to not rotate as much per se and they will, uh, let me go behind the camera and grab a pillow or here's one over here. <clears throat> so you can put a pillow on, and these are my Pilates pillows. You can buy them online. Uh, in the photo, I had, uh, you can see a green one because uh, black didn't really show up. So I'm gonna just angle it over there because that's about where my head is gonna be when I get down. I'm gonna start here. So at strict rotation, adding flexion of the lumbar, and then rest. You can go a little farther if you want and add a nice little movement of the body when you're down there and back up. So that's the option you can see in image three, the kneeling variation. Let's finish off with the last one, lateral walking planks. So let me show you the way it's shown in the book and I'm gonna show it facing away from the camera. Now I have, um, I'm on the 18 inch reformer and you wanna start nice and easy and I want these to be big steps so you can see that maybe I'm making my steps um, about a foot apart. My goal is to prevent any movement of the arms, meaning the carriage isn't opening from the arms and I want the entire body to move as a unit. So it's a very controlled step. Looks like I can do one more and then back. Now what I like to do is I like to add a little bit more work. At each end, go from elbows forearms and back to hands. So step one side and walk yourself up. I'll show you facing the camera. Just to mix it up, there's so many different ways you can make this basic kneeling uh, or uh, plank variation more challenging. So starting here and stepping it out 
trying to make sure the whole body moves as a unit. I think I'm like dragging the curtains with me. Let me go forward more. Go to hands and walk it back. And again, controlling the movement back down and step it back. So there's one option at each end, go up and down. The other option is you can add some rotation. So let's go all the way to one end and I'll show you stepping out. Tip the hips, reach it up, back down. Step it out, going back. Now these are all variations that are not shown in the book. Tip and up and back. So that's up, up, down, down with the arm, add a rotation. So going into a side plank, the other one, which I don't need to show you, you can put ankle bands a bungee around the ankles, uh, are the booty bands, or up around the thigh. So you're adding resistance. You also can add a spring. So I will do it often in class where I will add the spring after I've done this series of no spring. So option A, forearm plank all the way down and back, hand plank all the way down and back, decrease the load by adding a box. So let me show you that one. So if I have somebody that is bothered with elbow pressure or load on the shoulder, simply add the box. We always want to make sure our students feel successful and oftentimes in my classes, I will have my students go through a progression. Perhaps I'm going to start them on the box. Adding side planks. You can add all of these together if you want. Put the bands around the knees, around the thighs. Do the up, up, down, down with the hands at each end. Add rotation to the side plank. It's limitless. When I first wrote this book a couple years ago, um, I didn't really see how great uh, the options for adding more variations. I wanted to keep it simple. So in the second edition, which I'll probably come out in a year, I'm still finishing up my third one, which is athletic uh, uh, lower body exercises. So if, if for any of you guys want to learn more of these and the variations that aren't in the book, be sure to use the... Um, the search menu on the website and just type in no springs. Anything that's tagged or has the word no springs in the title, you'll see it. And this is a great way to take these books and kind of add some more. Now, let's talk about comments. Leave me a comment on this. If you say, hey, Sean, this is my reformer. Um, I'd like to try this. Ask me. I'm happy to tell you whether I think one person left me a comment um, not on this one per se, but on another one, and ask me if I can put a BOSU um, somewhere on the, I can't remember what it was. And I said, you know, I'm not a fan of BOSUs. I tell you a lot of people adding them to the machines. And I think if that's the piece of equipment you have, you can do it. But I'm, I'm just, I don't really pull that out too much. So in reference to this, could you do that walking plank with a BOSU? It's kind of where I was going to go with Absolutely, you can. Just be very safe and know that some of the exercises, if you're going to do a walking plank and add that rotational aspect to a side plank, I'm not recommending to do that on the ball. All right? So there's some variations you can do. Um, just have fun with it. Just know that most of these um, exercises in the No Springs Workout workbook were created as a foundation. There's so much you can do, but I just wanted to get you a basic understanding and be sure to check out any of the videos that are titled No Springs and also get creative looking at exercise and say, well, wait a minute, can I do that with No Springs and give it a try? Thanks for watching.